around, uh, I guess about 22 years ago or even longer, uh, Chris Kent and I wrote a uh, book called Jeet Kune Do Kickboxing. At that time, Jeet Kune Do was not well known. And at that time, we talked about the kickboxing phase of Jeet Kune Do, which had boxing and kicking elements. So we just redid that book with new photos. And now we are having an opportunity to show some of this stuff on a DVD called Jeet Kune Do Kickboxing. Chris, unfortunately, can't be here, but uh, this is his as well as mine. Uh, the whole idea of the uh, JKD kickboxing is to be able to learn to use your tools, your hands and your feet in combination, be able to learn to defend and move around. It's just basic, basic kickboxing. But when, the, when we started doing this, uh, kickboxing was not that well known. It was revolutionary at the time. In fact, our first t-shirt after Bruce passed away called uh, Bruce Lee's uh, Jeet Kune Do Chinese Kickboxing. So we're going to go ahead and start showing you some of the basic ideas, the basic techniques of kickboxing. The reason this is good on DVD, still photos are good, but you can't tell rhythm, you can't tell power, you can't tell speed. So hopefully, uh, by using this as a companion to the book, you will understand a little bit more about uh, Jeet Kune Do kickboxing. Thank you very much. I'd like to introduce our crew. We have a, a rather large group here, but they're gonna have a, a little bit about some of the stuff they're doing. This is Dennis Blue. He's one of the senior Jeet Kune Do instructors of the Wednesday night group. He also teaches uh, Jeet Kune Do at, uh, what the heck, uh, Chafee, Chafee Junior College. And he's in the process of writing three books at the present time on different aspects of combat, not just Jeet Kune Do. Next to him is my son, Tim Tackett, who's been doing Jeet Kune Do since he could barely walk. So it's been a lot of years for him. Next to him is Jeremy Lynch. Jeremy uh, teaches Jeet Kune Do with a group in, in Yukaipa. He also has some DVDs out. Next to him is Sean King. Sean is a police officer in uh, San Diego. So uh, if you uh, have bought one of these uh, DVDs and you tell him that, you can get out of a ticket. And uh, he also has a small uh, Jeet Kune Do group in San Diego. Next to him, a guy came all the way from New Jersey to be in this, Jim McCann who has a whole series of DVDs on boxing and on mixed martial arts. He's been with us for quite a few years. He's one of, the, uh, one of our good Jeet Kune Do instructors, as they're all good. And next to him is Neon Kwan, and he is uh, an acupuncturist, and he also has a small uh, Jeet Kune Do group in San Gabriel. And all of these guys are on our website, www.jkdwednite.com. So let's get started. One of the first things that we do in Jeet Kune Do is, is work on some of the basic boxing. Uh, although that the jab is not really used in Jeet Kune Do because it's a minor weapon to set up a major weapon, we start teaching it to learn how to do the power technique, which is the entering lead or the straight lead punch. The first is called a flicker jab or a flicker jab. So if, if Jeremy's here and I'm here, all it is is elbow only. It's just a flick to the eyes like that elbow only. If I add the shoulder to it, it becomes a speed jab, a basic boxing jab. If I add my hip to it, it becomes a power jab. Now each one of these jabs has less, the first one has less commitment than the last one. The final one is to put it all together into the straight lead punch. So from here, stationary, I'm just going to rotate, relax, and throw the whole punch out here. Just like that. So it's just boom, right there and out. From a further distance, I have to get the hand first and do an entering lead. All right? The next one is called an elliptical punch or a whipping jab, which comes here, into here, and back out again. Bruce called this fong. So from here, just rotate, relax, and whip it. And then last, if you're in close, you need to get the distance. This is a step back or defensive jab. 
just like that. All right, so now we're going to continue on with some of the younger guys. So here Jim is going to perform the lead straight to the body against his opponent's jab. Okay, on the next shot, we'll perform the same thing at combat speed. Okay. Next, Jim is going to perform the lead hook. Next, we'll perform the shovel hook. Okay. And the uppercut. The back fist of JKD is performed differently than when I was studying Kung Fu and, or, and, in China or Karate in the U.S. Usually you have to get the fist onto a line directly to the face. So usually it's done in a one-two motion. One, two. Or they keep the hand here to start with and you can see the back fist coming a mile away like that. So if I was doing this with Jeremy and if he was a good JKD guy, as soon as I did this, that's what he'd do. He hit me. So what I want to do is I want to make my back fist deceptive. So instead of copying it this way, I get it in motion, in action. So it looks like that. And that is the rear straight. And here he's slipping and crossing over the attack. So here Jim will perform the low straight rear with an inside slip against his opponent's right lead. Here we're going to compare the classical hook kick to the JKD lead leg hook kick. Okay. So on the classical hook kick, for most traditional styles, you're going to find that they're doing the dog on the fire hydrant deal here, where they're lifting their knee, leaving all this exposed, okay, and kind of flicking the kick out from here. Just so you can see that from this angle as well, classical kick is coming from outside here. Okay, which is a classical roundhouse kick. And in JKD, it's considered a hook kick because of the line it follows the same as a hook punch. Whereas on the JKD lead hook, okay, it's more of a non-telegraphic shot. So it's pretty much coming up on the line and at the last second, boom, is where it's finding its target. So whether it's low or high, it's at the last second he's trying to find that kick. So it's coming up from here, rotating right on the end. So on the pad, right through here. Okay. Now we're going to show again the lead leg hook kick on the variance in uh, elevation for the kick. So you have low, middle, and of course high. Okay. So again, low, middle, and high. Low, middle, high. Okay. Next we're going to perform the parallel side kick. So Jeremy's going to do the kick. Low, medium, and high. Okay. Oh, be careful. Oh. Okay, next is the inverted hook kick, which can be used either against the same lead or opposite leads. And again, that is also can be applied low, middle, or high. Okay, and Jeremy's gonna switch leads for me again. So again on the knee or groin as a low kick, center of the body, boop, or high. Okay, so that's just an inversion of the leg as it turns out and delivering the kick 
with the dorsum at the top of the foot. And that's the inverted hook kick. Okay, next we have the heel hook. <laughs> okay, and I'll perform, I'll perform the heel hook. I'll use Jeremy's hand instead of his head. <laughs> so here I'm using the back of my heel, not the bottom of the foot. So I'm coming up again with the same premise of trying not to telegraph this shot as I come up and applying the back of the heel. So the hick, kick is hooking down and back, similar to the backhand. And then there's a sweeping hook kick, which is where you're using the bottom of the foot and sweeping through. So those are the two variants. Now we're going to cover footwork. And I'm going to use some kicks in the application of the footwork. So right now I'm just going to use a basic, just a scoop kick. So first I'm just going to use the slide to get to the kick. And then the step slide to get to the kick. And then penduluming. So now is the lead switch. So again, I'm taking the kick. Now on my recovery, though, I'm switching back to the opposite lead. So coming in, coming back to the opposite lead. OK, now we're going to do the uh, side kick with the step and slide footwork. Now we're going to be applying the rear leg hook kick followed by my lead hand. So from this line, I'm taking my kick and following with the hand. That's the rear leg hook kick to the lead hand. So now I'm going to just simply retract after the kick. So after I take the kick, I'm just returning to position. Okay. So again, just taking the kick, returning back to my fighting measure. Okay. And then from here, I'm going to take the switch, lead switch. So after I kick, I step either down or step back. So again, following through to switch leads or coming back out to switch leads. Here we're going to go over some of the elbows, some of the basic principles. Essentially on the elbows, you're just following basic lines uh, using varying mechanics. So first, similar to the hook, I'm going to use my elbow, okay, just from here, okay, on a horizontal line. So you can see that from the opposite side. Same idea. Elbows coming up and horizontally across the body using the quick twitch muscles of the body. Okay. That can also be applied diagonally up. Or diagonally down on the lead as well. Okay, which is sometimes called a cutting elbow. Usually delivered right here, or if he presents his brain to me, boom. And that's the cutting elbow. Okay. And then there is a vertical elbow, something like a saluting motion where the elbow comes straight up. The same can be also applied to my rear arm. So again, rear coming horizontally, diagonally down, diagonal up, or vertically. Here we're going to just cover some of the knees. Okay, so the, the first knee, simply called a st straight knee essentially. So here I'm shuffling and I am not necessarily kneeing upward as much as I am forward. So as I apply my knee to the pad, my partner is going to kind of buff it straight down because if he pushes forward, my knee will slide up and you know, hit him right in the pubes or something. Okay, so from here, coming forward, boom, applying pressure. Now is the inward knee off my lead, which is coming up almost diagonally. So I'm slightly using the top inside part of my knee here, coming in at an angle. And then there's also the hook knee, and I'll just switch it here so you can see this, 
where the knee, I'm using the inside of my knee, hooking in. And then finally is a straight or thrusting knee that will come generally off the rear leg or from a switch where the knee is thrusted forward. And those are the knees. And just a quick note on, on most of the knees that you're going to see, you'll note that they have a lot, a lot of Thai influence is because Bruce did have notes on, on Muay Thai as well as his library of, what, 18,000 books and variable martial arts. So you'll see a lot of similarities in that. And though he probably actually never trained a lot of the Thai style knees, he did perform the knee. So just a quick note on the knees. Here we'd just like to go over some of the finer mechanics of some of the punches. Here Jim is going to walk through the lead hook. And what I want you to note are some of the movements. So I'm going to have him walk through it here. What you notice on the lead hook is the change in distribution of weight from the lead leg to the rear leg as he's pushing off the lead leg turning towards the direction in which the punch is being driven. Okay, and this is normally done with a very quick shift of the body weight and a sudden shift of the body weight forward and back on the lead leg. Okay. So if he were actually to be in tight or closer to his opponent, you could actually see where if he was, had slipped outside, the benefit of the hook coming up and shifting suddenly. Because since he is so close, he doesn't have all the space to generate a large amount of power so here he has to learn the explosiveness of shifting body weight and using his physics to transfer the energy quickly into the target. Okay. Okay. Same is going to be applied to the shovel hook. The shovel hook essentially here is being driven, if it's off the lead hand, by the lead hip. So again, shifting the weight, this time, onto the lead leg, driving also with the lead leg and hip, surging slightly upward and forward, following the basic mechanics you would if you were simply shoveling. And next is going to be the uppercut. The uppercut is essentially is a hook. It is just coming at a more vertical or diagonal angle upward. Again, shifting of the body weight, redistributing the weight, and driving with the lead hip. Okay. And what we're going to do now is Jim is going to we're going to compare the rear straight to the rear cross. Now the rear straight is coming straight in, directly rotating off the hip straight down the center, and that is our rear straight. Shifting the weight again forward, quickly moving the opposite shoulder back, driving with the rear leg and letting the weight fall down while the body shifts forward, and that is the rear straight. Okay. Now on the rear cross, it's simply turning the body further across the line, cutting across the punch or through a punch as your opponent extends his attacking arm. Same again, the mechanics are as he leads with the body, sudden shift of the weight forward and in the direction that he is striking. Here we're going to go over some of the basic five ways of attack. Here we're covering the difference between the indirect attack and the progressive indirect. On the progressive, excuse me, on the indirect attack, it is simply me feeding one line and then coming off and feeding another line. So there is a slight retraction in my blow before I go in for the next shot. So baiting that, going to the next shot. Whereas on a progressive indirect, just as the word describes, it is a continuous motion onto one line, moving up to the on other line without the retraction of the arm. So selling that and then shooting high. Selling that and then shooting high. Okay, and that's progressive indirect. So on this progressive indirect attack, again, I'm baiting or drawing that hand to get his reaction down so that I can get in on my straight leap. Okay, so again, trying to sell that enough to get his reaction to open that line. This time I'm going to use my lead to draw that hand down so that I can get my high hook. Okay, so not in an indirect fashion where I'm going one, two, but again progressively it draws as I come in for my hook. So here, using the same premise, again drawing that down and changing that to a high line backhand or hammer fist.
here I'm going to set this up by using the finger fan, okay, which is a motion where my fingers will fan or come across. And I'm baiting his lead hand response. Okay, On an indirect, it would be one, two. So making that and engaging here. Okay, Boom, boom. That would be more indirect. Where progressively, as this hand was fed, right about the time he responds, I should already be on the kick. Hmm? Here we're using progressive indirect footwork with a low to high jab. The first one Jim is going to perform is going stationary to stationary with a hit. So here you notice there's no forward foot movement. Okay. Next we have Jim doing stepping to stationary with a hit. Okay. And then we go from stationary to stepping with the hit. Jim is going to finish with step to step, hit, hit. So there's a hit with each step. Here we're going to illustrate some defensive tools uh, covering blocking and hitting. The first one's going to be performed is where Jim will throw his rear overhand and Sean is going to apply the shoulder stop. Next, Jim will be throwing his uppercut, and Sean is going to use his tool to cut into the uppercut. Cutting into the tool. Cutting into the tool. Okay. Okay. Next, Sean is going to respond to Jim's front uppercut using a rear hand forearm block and applying a high rear hook to his head. All right. Next, we're going to cover covering against the lead hook. Note from the cover position that leaves Sean's lead hand free to throw a counter blow. Okay, Dennis is going to be demonstrating some of the parries and hits simultaneously. Dennis is going to pass the front shovel hook and hit with the lead shovel hook. Here we're going to cover some of the elements of evasion. Okay, so upper body mobility here is going to involve the inside slip. Okay, on the inside slip, notice that Jim is turning his body and moving forward at slightly of a 45 degree angle to the line of uh, the punch. With Sean, it'll be the same applied against the jab, so you can see where the slip is coming forward. A slight lead with the head as the body sinks and drives forward, staying close to the line, so you should almost feel that punch graze right across his ear. Okay, next is the outside slip. Same mechanics, moving the opposite direction. Slight roll of the shoulder, chin covered, forehead leads to protect. Okay, and with Sean, same idea, slipping outside along the attacking arm. Trying to get in deep and close to the elbow. Okay. All right. So next, Jim is going to perform the snap away. We'll show the snap away from a front angle. So he drops his weight suddenly back from the phasic bent knee position, shifting his weight back to the heel and immediately shifting weight forward, which gives him roughly another six to twelve inches, depending on how far he shifts. Okay. 
Now we're going to cover the shoulder roll. Here on the shoulder roll, the roll contains the same mechanics as throwing the lead hand hook. So essentially an old, old YMCA boxing, if the cross came, you'd be using the shoulder roll either to roll the blow or roll and counter with the hook. Next is the bob and weave. So the bob and weave can be performed right to left or left to right. So essentially you're going from 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock or 1 o'clock to 11 o'clock as you dip in between and surge upward. So Sean is going to deliver his lead hook. Jim bob and weaves outside, inside to outside. And now against, and now the same against the rear hook. Dennis is going to be demonstrating some of the various intercepting uh, techniques. The first is a stop hit against a punch from Fighting Measure. Now at combat speed. Okay. Next is the stop hit against a kick. Good. Next is a stop kick against a straight rear kick. This will be right to left. And the sliding leverage against the left jab. Here we're going to cover the catch. Our first drill is the catch and return. So we're going to take this slowly. One opponent jabs, the other person will catch and then return with a jab. And here it's being applied with motion. Here we're going to cover simultaneous catch and return. Again, starting from a stationary position, okay, moving into more of a combat speed, and then adding mobility. Here I'd like to point out on the simultaneous or on the catch return, the feed is being fed to the rear hand for the catch, not to the face as a training development. Okay, later on, doing more active sparring, then they can do the catch when the strike is actually to the face. So right now we're doing it to the glove. Okay, Tim is going to be stop picking a lead hook kick from his opponent, followed by finger jab. Okay, next he's going to do a side stop kick against his opponent, uh, an opponent in left lead to his opponent's rear kick. All right, Dennis is going to perform a cut kick against his opponent's rear leg hook kick. Dennis is going to use distance to evade his opponent's side kick and return with a low side kick. Okay. Now Dennis will use distance to evade the attack and return with just a hand attack. Here we're going to cover attack by drawing. Essentially what I'm trying to do is trying to set my opponent up or bait him to come in so I'll give him exposure to a part of my body to draw him in so that I can effectively set up an attack or open one of his lines. So I can draw him down to get him to come up or vice versa. So that's attack by drawing, is to open a line to create another opening so that I can counter attack or do a direct attack. So here I'm going to draw his attack by slightly dropping my rear hand 
As his hand comes in, I'm going to counter with my own shot off my lead hand straight. Okay. Now, off his lead hand, as he comes in and I drop to draw, I'm going to slip outside, use my shovel hook, okay? <laughs> or I can get outside, boom, and also hook. So here, I'm going to draw by using my lead arm for the bait. As I drop this arm, he's going to respond to that, hopefully. And that's going to get me on the outside line, okay, so that I can counter. Whereas on the inside reaction, okay, I'm going to draw so I can slip on the inside. Draw, boom, slip on the inside. Draw, boom, slip on the inside. Okay. This time, I'm going to draw. With my jab, as I feed this and he catches, I'm going to slightly draw up my rear hand to draw that attack so that I can come in on this line with my attack. Here I'm following his arm. Boom. Following his arm up the attack. So I have simultaneous cover and attack here also. So next, same draw. Drop the hand. Boom. He's going to come. And I'm going to pick it up with my inside high guard. Boom. Bam. OK, here again I'm drawing. OK. So I'm going to draw by bringing my arms up to draw him to attack my body. Okay? And as he draws, I draw him into my body. I'm going to step off and finish with my rear straight. Okay. Same draw. As he, I draw the kick in, this time I'm going to use it to cut the stationary leg. So again, drawing him in, boom, take out the leg. Boom. Now I'm going to draw with my lead hand arm, okay, to draw that kick in. And as he comes in, I'm going to use any stopping hit to stop his motion. So I draw, boom, I can finish here, I can draw here, bam, sink in and finish with my cross. Boom. Okay, so those are my draws. Here we're going to go over some of the basic boxing combinations. Against the jab, Jim will slip inside and return with his lead body shot. Again, walking through it slowly a few times. And more, speeding it up for combat speed. And now adding mobility. Okay, next, against the jab, Jim will slip outside and finish with his rear uppercut. Again, starting off slow, moving to more combat speed, and then into mobility. Next, against a jab cross combination, Jim is going to slip both directions off the attacks and apply his body hooks. Again, starting slow, getting the mechanics, Okay, working to more combat speed and application. And mobility. Here against the jab cross combination, Jim's going to catch and roll and counter with his own cross and hook. And again, note that on the training drill, on the slow aspect, He's using the gloves as focus gloves, so he's striking back at the gloves, not trying to hit Sean directly. So that as they move into mobility, the shots are actually trying to make contact on the person. So you can gain the gauge of distance and timing. Here, against the cross, Jim will use his lead hand parry, followed by a rear straight, and then his lead hook. Note Sean covers, so there's no wasted motion of the drill, so the drill can, remains interactive. Next, we're going to go lead hook to lead hook as a counter. Okay, note again the covering. Note as they cover, they're slightly moving the body to go with the blow. Dropping and sinking the body weight. Hit and move. 
Here we're using a cutting combination where Sean will initiate with the lead hook. Jim uppercuts, he cuts into that tool and finishes with his own cross. Okay. And note, for safety, you necessarily don't have to use the forearm. You can actually catch with the glove to save your partner's arm. Here from the opposite lead, Sean attacks with the lead jab. Jim's going to cut that tool and follow with his own hooks. Note he's slightly angling out to get off the line and then returning his blows. Note all, all the time, when one hand is hitting, the other hand is covering. Sean keeps his elbows in, protect his body, and he's riding the blows. Okay, here again, Sean is using the boxing gloves as his focus gloves in this combination of jab cross, low hook, high hook off the lead hand that Jim is performing. Again, note that these are called glove drills. They're the basic premise for sparring. So it is not actual sparring itself, but preliminary drills to get you to the area. On this drill we're performing against the lead hook, okay, he's bobbing and weaving to the outside and countering with a body hook to high hook. This allows Sean to practice his cover and again gives his partner some targets. Again, since we just went over some of the basic boxing uh, glove drills, uh, again, it's essential that you learn some of the basic skills that you saw earlier in the video, uh, such as the catching, rolling, and covering. Okay. Now, we're going to set up a couple of drills just to give you an idea how some of them do work. So, for example, we'll take this drill as the rolling drill. So my partner's going to jab, and then he's going to cross. On the cross, I'm going to roll. I follow him back. I feed him for three beats. So, again, it's jab. Roll one, roll two, roll three. Very basic drill. So one more time, catch, roll one, roll two, roll three. Now it can progress to where I catch his jab, he's going to cross again, I will cross, he's going to cross, and he's going to, now he's gonna finish with a hook, forcing me to step inside and cover. Okay, so again, one, two, three, cover. Again, okay. And again. Okay? So on the next time, as he comes through, I'll pick up his jab. I'm going to roll. Two. On the cross, three. As I roll, I'm going to come back in this time, and I'm going to either uppercut or shovel hook. Okay? So we'll take that slow again. Boom. Two. Three. Boom. Again. So I pick this up. Roll one. Roll two. Roll three. Bam. Now I can take it a step further. So at the end of my roll, two, three, he's going to cut into my tool. Okay? So again, boom, bam, 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 cutting into my tool. Now I'm going to go to the next stage. So the last one I'm going to do is from here. Again, two, three, he cuts, I hook, and he finishes by covering. Okay? And they can progress on and on. Now, if, if you're coming from the JKD aspect of this, for example, we did the first rolling drill. I catch that and I roll two, three. Okay, that's fine for developing some more finite skills, learning how to move your body, learning to read and catch. But if you come from a more direct approach, when he throws that initial jab, I should be hitting. When he throws that cross, bam, I should be hitting. So whatever he's doing, I'm catching that punch, I should be initiating either the four corners or specifically, I should be intercepting. Bam. So, boom. So I'm gonna have him feed to me right now. So when he comes to me, bam, I should be hitting with that. He throws a cross, okay? So no matter what he throws, even if it's a hook, okay? So whatever he's throwing, I should be intercepting with that. Bop, bop, bop. Okay? So those are some basic drills. 
Another way to develop uh, speed and coordination, uh, it's based on Russian and Cuban boxing training. It's called reverse neural processing. So for example, my partner here is going to throw a jab, cross hook combination. Okay. Okay. Now what the trainer does is he calls out the combination, for example, jab, cross hook, but my partner has to perform it in reverse. So I say jab, cross hook. He's going to finish with his hook, cross, and jab. Okay, again, bop, bop, bop. Okay, so if I tell my partner cross, hook, cross, even in reverse, it's still cross, hook, cross. Okay, but those are some other drills to implement. Okay, so I'll give him another combination. So it'll be a lead jab, overhand, lead hand uppercut. So forward it would be jab, overhand, uppercut. Again, forward it would be jab, overhand, uppercut. So for R and P it would be reverse. So the same combination, upper hand, overcut, finish with the jab. Okay? Pop. Okay, this concludes the basic idea of the DVD for the kickboxing book. Consider this a supplement to the book. It is uh, not everything in the kickboxing book is in this DVD. The idea of this DVD was to show you those things that make it a little bit easier to understand when you can see it in action, when you can see it moving versus the still photographs. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, I hope you uh, check out our next DVD, which will be on the Jeet Kune Do kick, uh, textbook, Jeet Kune Do textbook. Thank you very much. About five years ago, we filmed this companion DVD to Chris Kent's and my JKD kickboxing book, the, uh, the new edition. It's been lost in space for about five years. It finally showed up a while back. And looking at it, I realized that we had left uh, a few things out that might be important. And plus, it was a little bit too short, so we wanted to add on to it. So this is an appendix adding on to the JKD kickboxing book. It'll de deal with some of the tools that we feel are important and not that well known. I'd like to introduce uh, two of our students that are not in the original filming of the DVD. Uh, Jeremy Lynch, who was in the original version, is also in this one. But this is my grandson, uh, Jacob Tackett, and Stephen Rizel. So they will be demonstrating some of the things on here and mainly probably being hit. Under uh, front hand tools, we have the hammer fist. It's very similar to the back fist. It goes on the same line. So Jeremy will then show <clears throat> the back fist. It flicks at the end like a wet towel thing. That's it, perfect. Now, the hammer fist is a little more versatile than the back fist. It's also a little safer on the hand. It can be used the same way the back fist is used, to the neck or to the temple. It can be used as a chopping hook on the other side coming downward to the neck or to the collarbone or to the temple. Also, if someone starts to shoot at you and you can move out of the way, you can hammer fist the back of his neck or even the spine. The forearm is a little bit closer range than the hammer fist, but it can be used the same as a back fist. You can also hit and then shove, get a guy out of the way. It can be used as a chopping hook to the neck. It can also be used going upward to the throat. And it can also be used against a shoot if you replace your step and replace, there it is. A very useful front hand tool is the use of the palm. Here Jeremy will demonstrate the two palm hooks on the focus glove. The first one is the, is the loose palm hook, like a hook in a boxing punch. It's a heavy hit using the meat of the palm. Dig the toes in the ground and relax the arm. Next is the palm hook. The palm hook is a closer range hit than the loose palm strike. 
And it's done a very similar to a boxer's hook, but the hand's relaxed and you're hitting with the palm. And other side so we can see it, the arm. Another uh, useful front hand tool is what we call the locomotive punch. It's a downward punch that strikes with the knuckles and usually goes to the chin of your opponent. Right now, Jacob will demonstrate this on the focus glove. This uh, particular locomotive punch can be used to both attack with and to defend. Here we're going to demonstrate a defense against right to right, a straight lead punch. Jacob will then angle out and strike the jaw of Steven. It'll crash right through the guarding hand. Under the section of rear hand tools, what we're now adding is the front back fist followed by a rear back fist. If your opponent throws a back fist, the opponent blocks and you just go kind of to a left lead and throw the back fist. That's done slow, now we'll do it fast. This also can be done with a hammer fist. And if he blocks, or with a backhand chop, if he blocks with his rear hand, you can then trap and hit. One more time. Another effective rear hand tool is a rear overhead. It comes at an angle that's hard to block and hard to see and usually can come over the opponent's blocking hand. One of the uh, ways you can really use a rear overhead is if your opponent punches and you slip to the outside and then you come over the guarding hand right down like that. Sometimes you'll see in the dodge, you can also it can be called a vertical hook too. Slipping outside and coming down. Since this is a kickboxing book, one of the kind of unusual old school boxing techniques is called a rear loop in slow motion. Instead of coming in straight with a straight rear, that Jeremy will show a straight rear right now, it goes on a downward arc. It loops, so it, it hits the top of the nose that way. It's a looping punch that goes all the way through, but it actually is hitting the nose. But it gives some idea of the power of the rear loop. A useful close range kick is uh, it's called in Wing Chun the dump tech or the stomp kick. It can be done with the toes inside, again, or outside. You hit with the heel to his instep and you can also slide down the leg and into it. From the, uh, the natural stance, the uh, non-aggressive stance, uh, excellent kick is the front thrust kick because it looks like you're not you're very calm you're very patient but when the person moves in you raise your knee and just like putting on a pair of pants very similar to a tie kick called the teep but it is a part of jkd because it also can be done from a fighting stance when your opponent moves in as defense you can also attack with it which gives it even more power. Under defensive tools, one of the things you really need to understand is how to use distance against the kick. If Stephen goes to kick and Jeremy retreats, if he retreats too much, Stephen can renew the attack, follow it a second time. See that one more time? Part of attack by drawing is Jeremy can on purpose move too far back to draw a second kick. He can then use a leg obstruction and a hit.
What you want to do is move just enough so that the kick barely misses you. So when he comes down, you can strike him with a hand even before his foot touches the ground. But he may pendulum back. So if he kicks and pendulums back, you just follow him back. One more.